Okay, so this is Dan Marson again. I'm going to show you part two of how to use the RecLink function. And what we're going to do here is uh, I'm just going to walk you through the entire uh, equation I typed in here, or not equation, but command. Um, I do RecLink last name, first name, because I say, you know, what variables am I merging on? And I'm merging on last name and first name. And I had already been in census data set. That's the one I was using at the time. So that's the master data set. Um, and then you specify which data set you're going to use. It's going to use Forbes rich list DTA. That was the other one. You have to specify what that unique identifier is in each data set. It's ID master, ID census. So, you know, you might imagine that in some data sets you're going to have a social security number. Um, I don't really have that luxury. Um, that would be actually a lot easier to match people between different things, but um, that's not what I have here. Of course, if you have a social security number across different databases, you can just merge on the social security number, um, not have too many issues. Okay, so I just specify what the ID is in both the master and the using data set. Okay, this required last name one, that is because I'm actually requiring that the last name be exactly the same in both the master and the using data set. Okay, so if I just wanted to come up with some level of closeness between the two strings, um, you know, like the last name could be a little bit off and the first name could be a little bit off, that would be one thing. I'm actually just requiring that the last name be exactly the same and that all the fuzziness just be in the first name. So that's like a, that's a good way to start and get most of your matches. And then you can run it again where you don't require the last name and use an exclude file where you exclude all the ones that are in some different data set that has the matches that you previously acquired. Um, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial, but um, it's not that difficult to figure out how to do that. If you wanted to do that, you know, you can just uh, drop everything or just keep everything if it has the merge score equal to three and then save that as a data set and then run this again and exclude that data set that you just made. Um, it's something you do if you, if you run a lot of um, iterations of this and you get, um, you know, a lot of different sets of matches and you never want to look over the ones you've already found before. Okay, um, this underscore merge, um, I'm going to say that when it generates a underscore merge variable, which is either going to be one, two, or three, I'm going to call it merge Forbes rich because I actually have a lot of different data sets I want to merge this thing up to. And otherwise it would do, it would create underscore merge for all of them. And then I wouldn't be able to merge them after time. I'd have to drop the underscore merge. So just, I'm just keeping them on. I'm just going to call them by basically the name of the data set I'm matching against. So here, Forbes rich. Um, you prefix is what it's going to bring in all the variables in the using data set as, but put on the front of them Forbes rich. So if I had also had in Forbes rich list, something called name, which I have here in ID and uh, the census data set, it would show up in the merge data set as, you know, it would be appended on the right side as Forbes rich name, right? And if I have manip name, that'll show up as Forbes rich manip name, something like that. Okay. So that way, you know, things that have the same variable name don't overwrite. They just get appended on the right side of the data set as something different. So actually getting pretty close to the, the finish here, which is fine. That's pretty good. Um, this gen Forbes rich score, that's going to generate a score for how close the strings are. So the, the score is going to be between zero and one. And if you don't generate, I think it's called my score. Um, and so, you know, Again, I'm going to be doing this on like five different data sets. Um, and so I don't want them all to have the same name. So here I'm calling it Forbes Rich Score. And then min score here is if you don't specify the minimum, it will match if the score of closeness that it computes is 0.6. So anywhere between 0.6 and 1. I think that's too low for what I'm trying to do. So I set it to be 0.9. I mean, there's no perfect number because, you know, sometimes you'll have RB Mellon and you want to match it to Richard B Mellon. And that's just like, you know, I C H A R D is a long way off from a period, so the closeness score might not be too high there, but you know that they're the same person. But if you set it too low, then you know Henry Ford is gonna get matched to Edsel Ford, and you don't want that. So um, that's uh, that's basically the entire command. It gets a little bit more complicated if you iterate this and you add an exclude file. But anyway, um, it's actually just finished, and it's gonna pump out um, this thing here. So it says that they've matched 36 of the master cases, um, that's kind of actually a problem because there's only 31 entries in the Forbes rich list. So how's it matching 36 of them? What it does, it'll actually find, um, it goes down the entire master data set and it tries to find anything in the using data set that results in the highest possible score. And then if that's above 
the minimum threshold, which I set was 0.9, it'll match it. So you can see right away that there could be possibly multiple matches of, of the same thing in the using data set to, um, to something in the master data set. Okay, and then it's gonna tell me what's unmatched right there, 4,156. And if I look through this, it's actually gonna keep the same order as I had before. Um, um, and so, um, actually no, it keeps the same order as the Forbes Rich list. And so what I see here is that, you know, number four, George F. Baker is showing up a lot of times, but George F. Baker is only one of these people. And, you know, um, you know, it might be this one, or it might be the trust of George F. Baker. This is kind of a judgment call you have to make. Um, it could be neither, you know, if George F. Baker is dead, then um, who's it gonna be? Um, there's obviously not three William K. Vanderbilts in the, in the thing. Um, Edward M. Green is probably not the same as Edward Helen Robinson Green. So you have to go through and delete some of these. Um, the easiest way to do that is to uh, generate an Excel file, outsheet uh, an Excel file, and then just go through manually and, and you know, mark them or delete them or whatever. But, you know, some of these actually are good matches. So John D. Rockefeller matched to John D. Rockefeller. Henry Ford matched to Henry Ford, right? Um, actually with a score of one. That's a perfect match. Edward's, Edward S. Harkness, perfect match, right? So... Um, in this case, it was actually the same one in both, so that's why we get the score of one. You know, but even John D. Rockefeller has a score of 0 0.9876. Um, you see that Edward Howland Robinson has a 0.9173, so pretty close. Here's Thomas F. Ryan, matched to Thomas Ryan, and there's also Thomas F. Ryan here, so uh, there's a duplicate Thomas F. Ryan. So actually, in the time before I, I made this video, I actually did delete the duplicate Thomas F. Ryan, so don't worry about the, you know, the quality of my, of my work here, but... Um, these sorts of things do happen. Um, here's another one. Uh, Arthur Curtis James is going to get matched to just Arthur James from the Forbes list, right? So that's what that happens there. And that's basically how it works. So, um, yeah. Um, and I may have misspoke earlier. Um, you can see here that the last name is showing up as Forbes last name, and the first name is showing up as Forbes Rich first name. Or actually, Forbes Rich last name, Forbes Rich first name. Those were the variables that used to be um, in the using data set and had, um, they have the U prefix attached onto them. So it's only attached to the ones that you're matching on that have the same name originally. Okay, so anyway, you'd, uh, you just, you know, come in here and, and you know, help outsheet to remember how to outsheet something. I normally just do outsheet using Excel file.csv, right? Um, so like outsheet using Excel, and then I'll say like 030414.dta, and then like comma, right, to make sure it's a, a CSV file. And then you do that, and then it'll come out with a um, CSV file for you to just go through and delete in Excel all the ones that are false. And then you can keep the ones with a merge score of three. So go through and, and you know, find the merge score wherever it is. Here it is. So anything with a three, you can keep, and then all these things down here with a one, didn't happen. Um, the other thing to do is once this is done, you have to add back anything that was in the using data set that wasn't merged. So you have to find a way to do that. And the easiest thing to do is just to um, merge this on ID Forbes Rich List with Forbes Rich List. And then you'll bring in everything that wasn't already in Forbes Rich List. So um, that's pretty simple. You can figure that out um, just using that tip. And if you have any questions, send me an email. But otherwise, I think you're all set to go. So good luck with that.